It's a rainy day with uh, Colonel K. What can I say? Well, there's a lot of things I can rhyme with that. The Colonel K thing. I'm kind of digging it. So, started bleeding the brakes today. Just my brother uh, came over to give me a hand and uh, got the mat. Oh, I'm sorry, got the Hydrovac bled and the rear brake shoes, and actually can see the drums flexing, which is <laughs> got a lot of pressure doing that because uh, those drums are thick. So I could actually see the drums moving in and out with the shoes flexing. Uh, wire harness. All right, so here's the one I'm pulling out, and actually I, I, I've got this, I offered this up for anybody who needed it, and somebody said, hey, I need all your uh, new old harnesses, so and I'll be putting another one in. Um, this wire harness is good, this goes to my horn, it also brings in a uh, cable from the battery, and... Uh, this is the horn wire. It actually cuts up with this one and then lands up going down into the center of the horn down there. And it also brings in a, um, a wire from the gas tank on that side. So there's about six wires in there and then a main wire coming off the battery that hooks up to the ammeter. Now here's one thing I have. I bought this wire kit. It's a good wire kit. You know, I'm not saying it's not. What I'm saying is uh, their, own, their own wiring schematics are missing stuff and their drawings that they pulled out of other manuals are missing stuff. Uh, it's kind of a cool advertisement on there for an auto car. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, this is an original half track picture out of the manual. And uh, I just highlighted some stuff here. And uh, you've got basically a bus bar. It's a uh, where the wire terminals tie in from the back. Oh, that's the rear harness. All oh, those wire terminals, uh, W, V, U, H, E, S, R, Q, all that comes in from the rear. The alpha, alpha through uh, Kilo, those are the wiring harness. That's the wiring harness. This mess ties into the uh, main harness going under the dashboard. Separate wires here. This wire here goes to the starter solenoid. This wire goes to the horn, ties in down there to the horn with a click. These two wires, six and nine, according to their uh, wiring diagram, go to the uh, blackout drive lights, which are both 12 volts on the top. This, as you can see, is a six volt blackout light. They were all six volt. Um, and to make that 6 volt, you, you land up putting it through a coil. And, uh, well, here's what I'm finding with this harness. So I, I'm looking at the, like, the, the drawings for the lights. You know, they have a real nice layout here. And, you know, it's, it's, it's helpful. Um, but what they've got here is their drawings are for a harness that they don't make. The harness they make, and this is, uh, uh vintage wiring out of Maine. The harness they make, and then they're sending you this thing to follow, is incorrect. Uh, they say I have a tilt switch here. A tilt switch is a dipper switch, right? High low beams. When this half track was produced in '43, and they pulled the uh, original fender mounted headlights off, they went to the pedestal mounted headlights with protection because they were uh, losing the headlights off the fenders all the time, either through combat or just driving through the woods and stuff. It would rip them off. They had a high beam, low beam. There is no high beam, low beam for these. They just got uh, ground, and you got a light, and then the uh, and then of course the wiring running up to your your blackout lights for your drive. These things are awesome. They basically uh, during combat you got a storage unit in the back, and in order to protect the wiring, you drop your plug in here, and then you actually have a screw here. It goes in and tightens that against that plug. It also tightens against your light for the ground, and you can see that hole there. That's where that, that runs into. Anyway, so their wiring harness that they're sending you to hook this up still shows a tilt switch and extra wires that you're never going to need on their wiring diagram, although their, their harness they send you 
has the right wires, but they're, they're ignoring the fact that you've got a filter box up here that actually reduces your power for your front driver's side headlight from 12 volts to 6 volts. So, um, and that's a new filter that I have. Here's the old one. She's, she's in pretty rough shape. You got two wires running into this. You've got one, this wire, which doesn't even it doesn't actually even show up in this diagram because the filter switch, this coil doesn't show up in here because at the time they had a tilt switch. So the this wire here runs to the uh, light switch, uh, blackout light switch on my my dashboard. You've got a light switch right there next to that wiper. If you over there next to the voltmeter, you've got a blackout light switch. That blackout light switch doesn't even show up in this drawing because they didn't have one. So, you know, this is the problem you have with, with somebody who's doing something and, and I don't know, I'm not saying they make a bad product, I think they make a great product, but I don't think they ever got any feedback on their, on their product, on their harness. Certainly not on this drawing, which with CAD and stuff or whatever, you could, you know, you could go ahead and change this drawing around um, and actually put, put that switch on here. Uh, I just show one light switch on here, service, blackout, and off. But uh, when I look at their wiring harness, they don't consider the coil. So that, that, this one brown wire here would go to the blackout switch. This wire here runs, it should be black and white. It's actually red with the uh, two white tracers, which is fine. Uh, it doesn't show up on the diagram here, by the way. This wire here runs to the uh, connection down here with my black and white wires to my front harness and you can actually see it's I marked it 6 volt and these have uh, little zero things on them there are little tags that say zero zero that and there's not even a zero on here <laughs> the first the first number you have is one so it none of that shows up so this this is a frustrating thing I have I try to get this thing wired up and uh, I'm finding it you know here's the front half chassis this is the thing that we did when we pulled the radiator out so we could get that chassis hooked up and the brake lines and everything they list, uh, there's actually six wires, three for each side. There's a black, a black with white tracer, and a brown. Now, number zero, they have up there for that one white, black white tracer, which is actually a pedestal light, but they don't even have a number down here. They have a blackout light resistor cable, which, okay, they, they actually address the cable here and the resistor, which I was talking about, but the drawing doesn't even show it. It shows all these extra... Uh, wires that are running for the high low beams which the track doesn't have so although they address the number and the information on here there's nothing to reference it to here so if you know if you're not used to working on this thing or you don't quite understand it you're kind of SOL um, so and I also something else I noticed is the uh, there's a port here and you're supposed to be able to plug in trouble lights. Uh, that's, uh, you know, like a, a jumper light to work on your engine and stuff. I have a really cool, <laughs> this is, this is an actual uh, real light. You can hang it or you can use a suction cup. It's been ma made by Benjamin Real. And uh, I think I found this overseas. It's, it's awesome. And then I have the original clamshell uh, light. Uh, but now, I won't get it now. I have a clamshell light that fits in there. But here's the thing. All those lights have a single, a single pickup, and then you ground out through the dash. The one that's in here, which looks pretty new, uh, it's got a double pull, so this cannot be correct. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that that's not correct. Um, I'll have to see if I can source one of these or take the thing apart and rebuild it myself and just put the, the single pickup through there, which is really not that difficult to do because you take these things apart. I've taken them a lot on, on other old Jeeps and. Uh, there's an insulator in there and you just drill through there with a spring and uh, run your pigtail through and, and you can fix it that way. All I've got left to do here is uh, pull my... Uh, hey, that's a rat's nest in there. There's a lot of wires in this damn thing. Um, so, um, that's where we're at. So just the main harness and of course I've got to get under there and I'm about to land up making some wiring that's not, uh, that's not all included. 
Here's the original World War II harness. It is in remarkable condition. It was sealed. Uh, the wires are awesome. Um, basically, there's a rear harness in here, a front harness, the main harness, which I'm using, and then a uh, harness for the horns. So, um, yeah, it's in remarkable condition. And the colors are so vibrant on the wires. Uh, your rear harness, you actually have to. Uh, that goes to your rear trailer. Um, look at the colors here. They're just flipping vibrant. I love it. Yeah, this is kind of the fun part. It's a PIA. Totally a pain in the ass. But, uh, you know, it's still kind of fun to figure some of this stuff out and, and uh, just to see where we're at. Well, as they like to say, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Finally got some decent weather here. Yeah, I'm actually uh, going to get my deck organized. The furniture pulled out and put underneath. I have uh, about eight acres here. So it's, uh, it's very nice. My old shop building, which I want to expand this <laughs> this spring, <laughs> it needs to be doubled, man. I do not have enough uh, do not have enough room here. Anyway, you can see my breakers right here. I have, I believe, uh, six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. The one on this end, the lug is very loose and uh, actually came out. So I ordered a new breaker, but I'm going to use a modern breaker just because the 50 amp breaker, when it comes in here off the uh, battery, fires up all the other breakers through a, a strip there. But I just for safety reasons, I'm going to put a modern 50 amp breaker in there. I'll tie my switches in to it. But I'll just feel better when I know that we have a modern 50 amp breaker so we don't have a fire or something electrical. Because once the cover's on the bottom of this, it would take you 10 minutes to get the cover off just to get at the breaker. I mean, I guess you could attack the battery. Uh, and I may just put a battery uh, switch, a cutoff switch on the battery just for safety. And uh, anyway, but that's where we're at. So as soon as that breaker comes in, which here in the next couple of days, I'm going to go ahead and install that. And then I can start putting the wire harness back together. These wires in here are all the loose wires that go to the different components, uh, to the breakers and directly to the components. And that wiring diagram I had, the old one, I was able to get the correct wiring diagram for this thing showing the pedestal lights. That's those lights that stick up there versus the original lights that were mounted on the... Uh, and that that is a correct diagram for this particular track. And there's a couple things in here that are not hooked up right, and that's probably the reasons they didn't work correctly. Here is my correct wiring diagram. That is for a half track with pedestal lighting. So my, my half track wiring was changed when this thing was um, rebuilt in 52. And uh, that, that makes a difference versus what I had talked about before. So uh, in fact, I was going to take my ohm meter. I've got I've to check a couple things on my, uh, I just rebuilt my ammeter. Uh, the needle wasn't sitting right in there and I was able to, with my clock and watch making skill set, it's very much like a clock and a watch, I was able to rebuild my uh, ammeter. I've got another ammeter too that I'm going to adjust out now and maybe somebody else can need one. Alright, so this is all hooked up to the junction block. This junction block here will tie in with the wires there that are all labeled. The other end is everything that goes into the dashboard. And again, I labeled that because uh, I wanted to confirm that everything here matches up with everything here. The colors on the World War II wiring diagram are a little bit different than what the manual has. There are three wires in, correction, four wires out of the ten. Four wires out of the ten, that's these last four here. They have the right base color, orange, black, brown and yellow but in the book they're all plain 
these ones as you can see all have wire tracers in them so although they went with the the uh, base color the wire they added tracers and that's I know for a fact that all those wires perform the functions they're supposed to and they have a base color so we're good to go so it's kind of a tedious thing but it's so important last thing you can afford is not to have your stuff working or to have stuff working that uh, safety issues with catching fire or shorting out I noticed with the uh, 50 amp fuse the, uh, the the point where you attach it on the lug had uh, basically had failed and it was just micro inches or micrometers from uh, centimeters from touching the steel it means I would have had a direct short from my battery just like it's like welding so I'm really glad I tore into this because uh, that would have been a failure down the road with any vibration uh, a certain catastrophic failure to have your uh, half track catch on fire with wiring would be a real disaster so again here we are yeah there is absolutely no room to work in here now what I've got to do is I've got to lay on my back stick my body between these gear shifts so I can get my head and arms up underneath there because a lot of this stuff ta attaches from below somebody said well hey take your cowl off that's this oh my god you can't believe what's all involved in doing that or take your dashboard out which is a lot of the bolts here on the cowl so we started taking all the bolts loose and I told my brother this is insane man or you know it's it is just much easier to to uh, work on it this way I, I can suck it up okay so here's what we've got going almost all the controls are put into place I have uh, I've had to make a lot of modifications there. Uh, I what, needed to put pins in there. These things, I had, uh, I was missing three of them, and, and actually I, I've got a bunch of parts that I put together, and uh, these are actually panel lights. So, put insulators in, uh, soldered my tips on, springs, etc., etc., and I just finished this last one up with a mount. There we go. Ah, the instrument panel lights. These uh, basically mount. Uh, this one mounts on the two screws here to light up the side, and then I have to actually make one for the speedometer. No, there's not one. There was not one on there. So I've got to uh, make one up for the speedometer, and I'll be working on that next. The only other thing I've got to put in here is I'll, I'll attach this. Goes to the uh, rheostat here. The rheostat was broken. Completely took it apart. Drilled out the rivets pulled it all apart and fixed it I was so corroded so I had to solder a little bit on the wire the wrist that wire itself uh, the thing works great you can put your own meter on there and and then you could also I mean the voltmeter as I was um, so this is the last light I have to attach this actually will land up going to this light uh, and then the this one here will be going to the light for the speedometer. So, um, the only thing I've left, left to put on is my brake control unit. That's these two wires here, marked 11 and I believe it's 15. 11 and 12, as I was. Light switches all work. Uh, blackout switch, which uh, had not been utilized before, that all works. I went ahead and put a new trouble light in. My other trouble light was just so badly uh, damaged inside, and I was able to find a new old stock one to put in. Of course, I've got to mount everything in here, put all the screws back in, and and uh, get all the uh, everything hooked up. I've got my new 50 amp circuit breaker, thermal circuit breaker, which I'm, I really like the way that uh, that came, and and that's put in installed in back here. So we're, we're just about complete with this. Um, and then uh, be able to go ahead and uh, get this thing, uh, take all the lights out. So I'm kind of excited about this. See if all my lights work and my uh, stuff on my dashboard. Uh, I just put a video out about redoing ammeters. Zeroing out your ammeters. A lot of these things, the ammeters are not zeroed out. They're not sitting in neutral position. They're either ch discharging, they're stuck there, or they're just they're on the charge side stuck. There is actually a way to adjust those in there, like a clock mechanism. 
So that's where we're at. Um, hopefully I'll have this pretty much finished up by the end of the day if I don't have any eruptions. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it's all coming together. Uh, hey baby. This is my pup Jill. I got Jack and Jillian. She's 14 or 13 and a half and he's 15 pushing 16. So, uh, yeah, those are my kids, my kitties. Yeah, the kids are all in Minnesota. So, here's the, uh, this is who I'm, I'm sending this out. This is the complete harness. Uh, there'll be a few wires that are going to have to be put in here. I threw some extra stuff in, extra pedestal mounts, uh, things I'm not using. Um, since mine were in pretty good shape. So, um, <clears throat> somebody had asked if they could have this, and I said, of course. So just helping out, folks. Okay, so that's where we're at. I'll uh, update you once I get everything put in. Thank you. Bye. All right. Wiring harness finally complete. What a job. Right now I've got my uh, blackout marker lights or parking lights on. So you can see they're glowing nicely. We also have the marker lights back here, number one, number two, we'll flip on the headlights, and we should get panel lights at the same time. All right, tachometer. Speedometer, instrument cluster, trouble light, voltmeter, no voltmeter. Oh, that's right, because I don't have my main switch on. Horn, we have two headlights up here, but I've got the blackout light on, the blackout drive light, and then the headlight. So, needless to say, Everything is working, including my brake, my brake lights, my blackout brake lights. All lights are functional. All controls are functional, with the exception of the generator, which I haven't put back in yet. I have yet to uh, hook the main power up to my radio. Uh, I have my cables running in there, but I have not attached the wires to the uh, the mount yet. And uh, I will do that when I uh, go ahead and get ready to drop the turret in. Now I need to finish wiring up the turret. My switches have not been wired here. And that's because I never had the correct wiring diagram, but I actually uh, visited a buddy this weekend and uh, we figured out which technical manual I need and I actually found one online, ordered it, it should be here Monday, so that I can finish hooking up my wiring. This is the Maxon F turret. Uh, which is different than all the other turrets produced. This is the last turret produced for the Korean War. All of the turrets have this box here, which is your firing circuit um, running up to your Cadillac. This is a separate charging circuit. This means I can charge my batteries on my turret here from the half-track generator, or if the half-track generator does not run, for some reason half-track batteries are dead, I can charge the half-track batteries from this switch box here in my uh, generator, which is actually under the cover here, generator will charge the batteries on the half track. This was something that was specific to the A2 series of tracks that were sent to Korea. Uh, part of that was due to the uh, environment there, the extreme cold. So they were giving uh, an option which the World War II tracks did not have, the ability to charge the turret batteries from the generator on the half track. I'm going to go ahead, I'll get my hood thrown on here, 
um, since we're done with the wiring and uh, I was able to get my uh, blackout lights rebuilt I've got another bulb here that's done these are hard to find and if you do they're very expensive and here's what I did I got six volt LED light bulbs I go ahead and unsolder the old bulb, dismount it, put the new bulb in, and I'm using a uh, an interesting solder product that uh, does not require as much heat called solder it. It's a silver bearing solder paste. Uh, it says it works with the heat of a match or a lighter. Very low heater from my gun, my solder gun. Does a nice job. Um, so this is a rebuilt light. Uh, I'm gonna. I have want to crimp this down a little bit better here, and I'll just go ahead and and work on that with a small uh, uh, soft hammer. Just to want to hammer that down a little bit better, but it is sealed pretty good. So I had two lights that didn't work. Now I have two lights that do work, and uh, I say I went with the LED technology, which gives you a lot of light, but it stays cool. And actually, uh, these are only about five five six bucks a piece on Amazon. Six volt LED light. So I'm actually pretty pleased about uh, how that worked out. And I did use an LED light into my compass, which I uh, I started tearing down last night because the uh, directional indicator in there doesn't float evenly. Now, uh, I luckily I have the book on this Cheryl compass, which is an armor compass, and. Uh, I started started turning this down to take a look at it. Oops. Basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and, and open, cut the top of this open. It is sealed. I'll take a Dremel. I'm going to go ahead and cut the top of this open. I'm going to clean this out, drain the liquid, clean it out, and then go ahead and refill it, and then I'll seal it again um, with all the different. Uh, Glues and things we have today, uh, I think that that'll be a, that won't be a problem. Um, and you can see that thing does not sit evenly in there. I want it to sit evenly. I have another one of these compasses, but uh, I'm going to try to repair this one first. It does move, but not very cleanly. And it's got some deposit because the uh, indicator here, some of the paint has come off, and that's actually deposited inside of here. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take this down and uh, repair it and then go ahead and install it but uh, what's cool is that uh, I'm using uh, LED light bulbs again in the uh, the housing uh, let's see what I did with the housing oh here we go so we have an LED light bulb here <clears throat> it's nice and bright plus the vibration doesn't break them I used all standard light bulbs and the other mounts uh, you know, and I may, I may actually see about using LED light bulbs eventually there. Alright, just adding some more material to our uh, wiring. Let me uh, show you what we do underneath here. This is the uh, front harness. Of course, we had to lift our radiator up and all that good stuff to get the front harness in. The brake line. Back here you have, uh, now my track because it's an A2 actually has a conduit that runs a uh, radio wires and a uh, positive battery cable up through the uh, floor here and it actually ties into a what they call a, a slip ring. Slip ring is uh, what you usually find in a tank so when the turret runs power is transmitted from the hull to the turret. Uh, that was a feature that was done on this track when it was converted what you've got back here is you've got uh, your blackout wires. This is the brake and tail light wire, blackout brake and blackout tail light wire, which actually tie into your trailer socket, your resistor here. Then my trailer socket's up above that. That's your trailer socket. You've got three wires that run to your rear tail light here: brake light, tail light, and blackout light. On the other side, your harness runs through your holes and grommets. There's brackets here to hold it into place. 
you've got two wires that run up to that light for both the blackout light and the blackout breakout uh, light. So that's pretty much back here. One thing I ended up doing was taking a long piece of wire and uh, with some help um, tying into the strip. There's a uh, wire strip up on your dashboard where all these wires tie in from the back. Uh, they tie into the dashboard. Um, and I checked the continuity of all these wires. So like number 15 is, uh, let's see, that would be for the uh, brake switch, the electric brake, 14. Uh, both I think both those are maybe 12 and 13 for the electric brake and then the uh, 14 and 15 were for the uh, light switch itself for the uh, brake for the brake light um, so you've got two sets of wires up front by the brake system for that and then uh, depending on what kind of track you and this is kind of a universal you would tie those into here if you were going to use your trailer the uh, this converter here, basically like the front converter, breaks your 12 volt down to 6 volt. Actually, it reduces your amperage. All trailer lights and World War II trailers were 6 volt lights. So this is a 12 volt system. This breaks your uh, brake light, correction, your brake light, your tail light, and then there's an electric brake wire that actually runs from the harness up into the plug. So there's two wires from the harness that hook there, a third wire goes up and hooks into your plug, and then the fourth wire is a ground, uh, so you can ground out your socket. So, yeah, there's a, it's, a, it's a unique system, so, you know, when you're going through your track, if you're setting it up, um, depending on which diagram you have, uh, that's, uh, that, that won't even show up in your diagram on your original. It was not. Uh, in the original diagrams it wasn't in there. Your resistor in the front was not there, the resistor in the back was not there. I was fortunate enough to find a uh, wire diagram from the 50s that showed all that stuff and it actually was set up for the pedestal lights which I have. On an interesting note, I received a phone call this week. I had posted in one of the three forums that I constantly post on with questions and information and sharing with others what I'm doing and uh, I talked about the vintage main wiring harness which is a really quality harness but I was very disappointed with the instruction sheet and uh, believe it or not Joe I won't give Joe's last name just to protect his privacy but uh, he was the owner at the time that I, I purchased my wiring set and diagram and I had a spare wire that I could not figure out on my uh, rear harness it just did not fit in anywhere and he called me uh, left a message and we talked the next day and uh, at the time that they produced their harnesses they too did not have a, uh, a copy of this this diagram which actually uh, wiring it's an M it's a called it's wiring M2 six nine six seven this is the wiring diagram for my track with the pedestal lights. Uh, you've got a resistor here. You've got a resistor in the back. There's your resistor in the back. These are the things that are not on the original diagram that I received from uh, vintage main, vintage wiring as I was out of main. So we talked. Now they did an excellent job. They produced some outstanding uh, you know, blow up uh, wiring harnesses uh, out of the TM. Uh, but then again, these were for the original track with headlights. And they have a dipper switch, which is a high leap beam, low beam. We don't have that on our track here. And a lot of the new tracks from 43 on did not have this. So this is more for like a 1942. And uh, that's, that's the problem. Um, a lot of the wires are the same, but the lighting wires for the front and for the back are a little different so that's there's some confusion because when you're looking at this diagram you've got wires back there that I don't know what they're for you know where do they go and the one thing that really threw me off is my rear harness has actually uh, 12 wires coming up correction yeah 11 wires coming up and 10 slots 
10 slots on our uh, our tab here. This is the tab we're talking about here. It's an insulated tab. So the rear wiring harness comes up here, ties into your harness going into your dashboard. I had one extra wire coming in out of that harness that I could not account for, even doing a continuity check with all the other wires in the back. And the only time that that wire was hot is when I had my headlight switch on. So after talking with Joe, we determined that when they made this wiring harness, they accidentally put in an extra wire for the dipper switch. That's the high-low dimmer switch, which went right under this compartment. So it would have just run right through into the dipper switch. So uh, I went ahead and just trimmed that wire back and, and uh, taped it off and shoved it back into the harness. So um, needless to say, now everything works just like it should. I've got all my panel lights, blackout lights, brake lights, headlights, uh, tail lights. Everything works on here just like it should. So. We are done with this project, but uh, I thought it was really good customer service as somebody no longer even owns the company, but at the time that I purchased it, he did, and he was concerned enough to get a hold of me and help me figure this out. So uh, kudos to Vintage Wiring and Joe, but uh, I say they uh, did not have a copy of the uh, pedestal wiring diagram available to them. So that's the thing with these old vehicles. You're trying to redo something uh, without the, all the original diagrams. Uh, there are things that are going to throw you off. And uh, reaching out to talking to other people in the community, you, you find something like that wiring diagram. So I had some help from John in California and Steve. Uh, I think Steve's from the Carolinas. Provide me each a copy of that, uh, that diagram, which really helped me a lot. Uh, the only other thing I changed on the wiring here is my circuit breakers. Let me get some light on this. I have the original circuit breakers in there. A lot of people put the new ones in. My circuit breaker strip, which is right back up in here, that's a circuit breaker strip. What I did do is I went ahead and I added a modern 50 amp circuit breaker. which again is like the original circuit breakers is, is a thermal reset so I went ahead and beefed that up and I went ahead and added a nice 50 amp a modern 15 amp circuit breaker so I've got my wire coming from my battery heavy duty wire coming from the battery and then I have a lighter wire running to the circuit breakers themselves to provide uh, power along with all the harness you have uh, yeah you have one wire and hook that's for my siren I reran my siren wire and I've just got to go ahead and and, and hook that back up and then uh, attach it to the firewall there with a bracket the uh, the uh, you have five wires coming off those circuit breakers going to different components to different switches you have uh, one coming to your voltmeter one coming to your trouble light that's your trouble light You've got one coming to your uh, light switch, and then you've got two other ones uh, coming, one to, I believe, to the fuel, and let's see, maybe one to the amp meter. So um, you have five main wires coming off all those fuses and tying into your different controls on top of everything else. So it's... Uh, there's a lot under there <laughs> and a very small amount of room to work with as you can see that little space up there is basically what you've got to work inside and uh, if you can see working upside down in here even with my uh, big throw pillow in here it's uh, quite challenging to get underneath there get your arms up in there and tie things together there are brackets for your lights here per se you can get this instrument cluster in with the bracket on, but you cannot get the instrument cluster in with the speedometer on because the speedometer has actually got a reset um, link that runs all the way through the back of the dash. So you have to get under there and put that thing, screw that thing in, and I mean there's almost no room. So uh, What I'm also doing is uh, my compass, which is a, called a Cheryl compass. It's a special compass that was designed in World War II to work with armor. Uh, as you can imagine, a magnetic field gets a little messed up with all this iron. This thing is uh, unbelievably well engineered. But I was dissatisfied with the uh, way the compass was performing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and cut into the uh, compass, take it apart, and then refill the fluid in there after I clean it. So uh, wish me luck. Yeah, I'm going to have to use the Dremel tool and I'll have to cut the top off the, uh, the plastic case. Carefully drain all the product and then pull the, uh, the, the uh, compass itself out of there. Clean the mounting all back up and put it back together and then fill it uh, again with a product. Which probably be, uh, I'll have to check. I do have the original book. It may give me a clue what they put in there. If it, uh, it may be uh, probably, uh, but uh, mineral water, not mineral water as I was. Uh, oh shit, I can't think of it. The kind of stuff you use in your iron off the top of my This is your TBI brain at work, man. Traumatic brain injury. Um, Desalinated water. Basically, you just want to use something in there. Won't ever have a buildup, and maybe a touch of alcohol uh, to help keep the water from ever getting nasty. So um, that pretty much concludes this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I appreciate it, and uh, I'll show you our next project right now. We'll get the hood back on, tie that all back in. Uh, once that's done, I'll go ahead and put my wheels on and we'll uh, take this thing for a spin check out the uh, rebuild fuel pump and uh, carburetor the tracks so I can go ahead and uh, work these a little bit and adjust them um, and other than that uh, our next project is to finish the interior install for the uh, turret there's your slip ring uh, so basically when the turret turns, this rotates with it. It's been sitting for a while, it's a little stiff, so I'm going to have to take in to tear into that. It's made by Packard. Uh, this actually bolts the bottom of your turret, so when your turret spins, uh, you got a power wire coming in, radio wires coming in, the power wire going out to the turret battery, radio wires going out to the turret radio uh, switches and stuff. So uh, that's basically what that does. It's it slips. It's this slips within the ring itself. There's brushes and pickups in there. And uh, when we take that apart to relubricate it and clean it up, I'll I'll show you what we've got going. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye bye.